Hi, welcome back. You're watching Kolsky RC. Today's video is about the DJI FPV drone. So it's been out a few months now and it's really just to give you my opinion of it and what I think about it. So if you've watched my channel for any time, you'll know that I'm quite direct in comments. I don't. If I don't like something, I'll say I don't like it. If I like something, I'm quite enthusiastic about it. This is not going to be that easy for me to make this video I don't know whether I like it or don't like it I can't tell you what I can tell you is when I go flying it's not the first thing that I think oh I'm going to go fly this I'll normally pick up a five inch or one of the new four inch long rangers I tend to fly them far more than I fly this and this is the reason so I do not believe when it's, that this is a good quadcopter for flying as an acro machine or even as a long range cruiser because as a long range cruiser I can fly one of the other things like the Flywoo or the Diatone get longer flight times with a lithium ion battery and still get 4k footage when I attach a small 4k or a GoPro to it so there's the bits I find difficult it's fun to fly when you fly it in sport mode and you're just flying it like you'd fly a DJI Mavic it's nice, it's quick, it's responsive, it's crisp, makes a lovely noise when it flies over your head. Really is nice and it's easy to fly. The battery time on it is shocking, it's nowhere near up to what it was listed and if you fly it in sports mode you're not going to get much more than 8 or 9 minutes out of it. So it's limited in that respect and of course the image quality is not going to be what you get from the Mavic 2 or something like that or the Mavic Air 2 you're not going to get that quality out of this quad but it has a lot of things other things that of course much better than that it's got goggles so it flies FPV you get that full immersive experience the picture quality coming back through the goggles is phenomenal far better than anything else on the market much better than Sharpbite better than anything you can get going through a pair of goggles really is nice and that's the big advantage, isn't it? And flying FPV is a totally different animal than flying a Mavic. I told you this wasn't going to be easy for me to come to a decision on this. Would I buy it again? No, I probably wouldn't buy it again. If I was to make, come back round again and not bother, I'd probably just say, no, I'll leave this one alone. I'm not saying for one minute this is a bad quad. It isn't. And if you look, if you like the one you've got, and that's fantastic. I am not for one minute saying you've made a bad buy. This is a personal, my opinion. Certain things I do think that are a complete waste of money. This, you've seen the videos. I saw the videos, so it'd be good for and I've flown it once with it. Not for me. Boring. And there's other things I like. I do like the controller. So I love the controller. And when I go back to flying my other Mavic, um, sorry, my other, Mavic, my other the DJI quads, all the, the other ones I've got that fly on the FPV1 system, let's call it, with the other controller, I take a little bit of getting used to that. Hence why I'm now starting to migrate most of my other DJI quads over to the Tango 2, and which is why I like this so much. I very much love the Tango 2, and that's what I've been flying with predominantly now. Um, I got used to it for flying a load of analogues, now I've started to swap over my DJI Tackle 2, um, that as well so i'm putting either crossfire or um tracker tracer on it so that's what i'm doing so i hence to like this controller i don't think it's as good as the tango but i do like it i like the form factor i like the way it feels in my hand some people won't like that and i've come from the old school of playing the old type controllers but because of the tango i very much got used to this style controller so for me this is a winner obviously we just the goggles this is the same as the Mac. What the V1s, the only difference is that these run on 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz, which is a good and bad thing. Bad because these aren't really compatible with the whole system. It's not as easy just to bind up, just to put this onto another quad. So you've got to mess around and take it out of certain modes and put it into modes, which is a pain in the ass. which is why I've still kept my V1 goggles and won't get rid of them. So I still have both goggles. If I use my V1 goggles for the V1 system, let's call it again, 
So that's what I use with them. Obviously moving forward when the new units come out, I'd imagine DJI Air unit, they're going to make a, can it, or someone's going to make a unit that's compatible with this. Because if they don't, this is crazy because this at the minute only uses slides of this. You'd have to think that moving forward, that's the way it's going to go. So this system is compatible with another, what if you like, another performance quad that you can fly for Lacro. So like I said before, I do not believe this is Acro and I, for some certain reasons it's too heavy, the weight distribution is not great on it and it does, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't fly Acro with it, you can't fly Acro smoothly in my opinion, not to get the same level that you can get flying a either home built or one of the bind and fly units. The camera on this is good, but there's better about and I think to be fair with the camera when I, when I first reviewed this I said it didn't need a 3-axis gimbal I, I, I was wrong it needs a 3-axis gimbal the footage you get out of it with the single axis gimbal isn't good enough in my opinion it need, if it had a 3-axis gimbal and I don't really understand why it didn't now maybe because of the aerodynamics of doing other things and the fact that this thing's going to be upside down and quite a high velocity that maybe that would have problem with this camera unit if it had been a three axis i don't know or maybe they're just waiting for the next one so they can make the next one three axis obviously because it's dji so there will be a follow-up um i don't i can't tell you the durability i've never crashed it uh i've never even been really close to crashing it to be fair it seems quite it's very very easy to fly i've got in trouble with it a couple of times and i just smack the pause button now i haven't put my stick i left my stick in the center position because i fly this more for getting footage with uh, rather than wanting to fly it accurate because i have the um, luxury of having another qu other quads obviously if I didn't I would probably make I would definitely make this stick so I fly another one by the way if you're wondering what I'm doing with that stick I would make that stick a normal stick and I would much easier to fly an acro because flying it in acro now I can I, it's easy enough for me to do because I've been flying a while but it's quite strange the way they did that there should be a catch or switch or some kind of thing on the back that releases this it's possible to do because i've seen some cheap toy ones that did it and you could just flick over and take this out of this mode or this side whichever side you throttled on and do that they didn't do that they made it so you yeah, have to just screw in the back of here again it's easy enough to do but it's not something you can just flick a switch and swap around so i leave mine like that but if you haven't done, I suggest if you are flying this thing, I could by all means put the throttle on a normal stick, take out the center spring. So, like I said, it, it's not going to be easy for me to make an opinion. I, I find it difficult. Uh, I'm going to leave you with a little bit of footage. I think I've already had this up before, but I'll leave you a couple of minutes footage showing what the camera looks like when it's flying in sport mode at quite at flat out so the entire flight i did was flat when i fly this thing sports mode i fly it flat out i don't tend to ease off the throttle it's virtually full on all the time and that's why i get low flight times i know people are going to say they can get 12 and 13 minutes flight time but that's pottering around and, and to be fair if i'm going to pot around with this thing and take shots then i'm not going to use it i'm going to use a long range um under 250 gram quad i'm going to use and that can do acro so i'm going to fly something else i'm not going to use this i'm going to use something like one of the fly or the explorer or something like that that i can fl fly in my opinion smoother and get a lot better flight time because the weight's obviously lower and i'm flying it on lithium ions so like i said it's not a video that i'm i know Sorry about that, we just had camera malfunction, which is why you've got a split in the video here. I don't know what the hell happened there. Um, but yeah, it moved. So, anyway, back to what I was saying. So yeah, it's difficult for me to make this video and difficult for me to make an opinion. And I'm not going to say to anybody, go out and don't go out and buy it or go out and buy it. I'm saying, if you haven't bought one already, think about what you want to do with it. If you want to fly and all you're wanting to do is get really nice camera footage, do not buy this by the Mavic Air 
to well I don't know if it's called now Air 2S is it buy like that because it's cheaper than buying this if you want to fly Acro and that's all you want to do I don't recommend this either but if you want to fly Acro and you don't want to do all the messing around you have to do with beta flight and all the rest of it yeah then go for this it's quite an in-between. If you're like me and you fly Acro and you've got a DJI drone and you're thinking maybe you're buying this, I definitely would definitely not go for it. I'd stay away from it because you've got already got what it does, what you've got in two different quads. This gives it in one package and I'm not saying for one minute it's not immersive because it is a really nice feeling flying with these on. The whole thing's great, but it's expensive. Even though I did a video breaking it down, it's not that expensive because separately it's not that expensive, but as a package it's expensive and I think you can get better for your money by making your own, buying a set of goggles, buying, unfortunately you can't buy this controller, you're going to have to buy something else if you want to build your own quads or you want to build, a, you want to buy the bind and fly stuff that you can buy off the shelf, i.e. this. So this is a Flywheel Explorer. I don't know if you've already, if I've already put the video up of this, but I have obviously this, and then I've also got the normal four motor version. Both of these come in at under two hundred and fifty pound, and both of all both of these are running on the DJI system. So you will have the experience going back to your goggles, and they do fly on these goggles, but they don't fly on this controller. So you, you need to have a different controller, both of these two at the minute are both flying on Actually this one's still bound to my DJI system The Explorer that I've just showed you is flying on TBS, which is what the aerial is there So, I'm saying well done to DJI for making the product Because they've made something and they've got more people into FPV, which is fantastic because People are going to buy this, fly FPV and if they fly in this well, they're going to be in for a world of fun because it gets so much better from here. Thanks ever so much for watching. You have a fantastic day.